what an action packed day. Whew. They're not going to believe this on the podcast today. Vinny, I don't, I don't know if I could. No one's going to believe me. You thought I should tell them anyway. Well, here goes. Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name's Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Close your eyes. I am joined by Vinny Andre Newland, who is underneath the table, chewing on one of his bones. He seems quite pleased and content and happy, which is nice. And we've just had a little nap. A little bit weird because it's like four minutes past nine in the evening now. And you might think, what's a weird time to have a nap? Well, let me tell you. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Anyway. Wow. I don't know where to start. I do have something to mention quickly is for those that haven't joined my Jason Newland's boring group on Facebook, please come along and join because we have dwindling members of lost two 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 members in the last few days. Was it hundred and sixty one now it's hundred and what's hundred and fifty nine. So, I don't know what's happening, I don't know who's left, I don't know why they left, I just don't know what I did, I don't know what I've done wrong, I I just, (laughs) so yeah, if you'd like to join, join, Um, come along and, um, I don't know, it's it's a, you can then leave messages and tell me how, how smelly I am, or I don't know, whatever, whatever you want to do. So, um, I've also got a YouTube channel as well. Uh, so, and I've got two podcasts, two podcasts. Let me bore you to sleep. And then there's the other one. I forget the name of it. Not good at promoting, really, am I? Not. Not, 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 not. Uh, let me. Oh. So, look. So, the name of the other one is. It's. Something sleep. Oh, just pressed the podcast by accident. It's a sleepy thing. Sleepy. I generally can't remember because I just don't take much notice. Uh, I I just upload things to it, and then so look. I got Nord VPN yesterday because I keep getting these viruses and keep getting the like just it's getting silly and I have had to reboot my computer the the other day I had to re pretty much reboot the whole system and I decided that's enough I, I don't the VPN, it's a protection as well. I mean, you can use it to mask. It's basically marks your, marks, masks your details so that you can be online without having been tracked. And it's not for dodgy stuff. It's so that your information can't be taken from you, you know, when you're online and stuff. So, um. It also looks out for 
if other people are using passwords and stuff like that. Did I say Vord? Is it Nord? Nord VPN. So I've got it on here. There's a few bits on it. It basically it add, adds adds and trackers. So it looks out for that malicious files. So I've had 1,854 ads and trackers attempt to follow me in that. I had no vulnerabilities and no malicious files, which is good. Um, just having a look what other stuff is on here. I don't really know too much about how it all works. It says web protection. Uh, file protection, some features are turned or off. I don't really know, but I need to look into that. Um, vulnerability detection protected. It alerts about vulnerable apps detected on your computer. Um, web protection, real-time protection against malware, trackers, and ads. So that's that. And then the other one is prevention against malicious downloads. So I need to, that might be an add-on, so I'll leave that for now. So the threat protection, it, web protection, malware blocker, web tracker blocker, ad blocker, URL trimmer. I don't know what that is. Remove tracking parameters from web addresses to enhance your privacy. Okay. Uh, web protection activity and it's just gone through a few that it's doing it on YouTube 166 blocked threats wow isn't that interesting no <laughs> so even Descript um, wow blimey so there's quite a few websites have gone on to the local newspaper blocked 18 threats from the local newspaper F 4 from Google Mail 11 from ok I'll move that one <laughs> um, a credit card one 4 Ironically, it's it's blocked three threats from the Nord account website itself. <laughs> this is the this is the website for the protector that I'm, I've got, which is blocking threats. The actual website I use has blocked itself. Is that funny? I think that's funny. Um, OpenAI, 13. 16 on... It's 12 on SoundCloud. Right, Vinny's over here and some water. I'm going to talk about him. I've got a thing on the way in that's coming, which is going to be tomorrow, which is uh, anti-barking whistle thing which basically it lets off different sounds and it it basically just stops them from barking well I've I forgot but I got an app that does the same thing I've been using it today and it's worked I mean, literally just then there was banging downstairs while I was doing this it was banging like literally like a hammer it didn't even notice, didn't take any notice of it. It's actually, I've been using it since I got back, so I had to go out. I can't, I can't even believe. Oh, you, oh, you, oh. Anyway, I had to go out, so I'll have to leave him from half two to five, I guess, about five o'clock. No, gone five. So it was a good over two and a half hours. And he was so excited to see me. 
for about, I don't know, 18 seconds. And then he was bored again. It, it was like, just really? He was like, ah, daddy, 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 daddy. And like, then, oh, you're not my real dad. And he walked off. It just, just, it just, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess someone did point out, if he's with you 24 hours a day, that's got to be boring for anyone. Wait a minute, I'm not sure that was much of a compliment, was it? Hmm. Sounds like a bit of a side swipe to me. But that makes sense. I mean, he's 24 hours with me. I wouldn't want to spend 24 hours doing anything, would you? 24 hours. I wouldn't want to spend 24... I wouldn't even want to spend an hour doing something I enjoyed. That's just too long. 24 hours? Okay, maybe an hour. Five minutes is pretty much... You know, depends what it is. Depends what it is. Even watching a movie, I'm like... Oh. Is it, is it, how long how's not, how long's left? Wonder what to do. You know, I have to ask people, have you got the time? Have you got the time? Do you know how long this movie lasts? Yeah. That's why we don't go to the cinema, isn't it, Vinny? Peg. Oh, anyway, so I've got this. This is something that I've put off getting and I'm like, oh, well looks like it's needed in this day and age especially with all the AI and um, a lot of people know what they're doing with this stuff I don't really I just have to kind of just it's just something that's needed I think which is a shame but it's okay. The good thing about it is I can now access websites I couldn't access before. And one of them, before your mind starts to go into overdrive, is this one. It is called... Uh, notebook. Notebooklm.google and basically, you can search through your files, and it's it's Google's created it, so it's it's not sort of a private thing. However, it is only available to places outside of the UK and eighteen and up. That's what it says here. Notebook LM, which is large model, is currently only available in the US. Notebook is only available in the US for users of 18, uh, 18 and over. So I go, okay, what am I going to do? Try, try it. Does it allow me? Nope, it doesn't allow me. So what I do is I go to NordVPN. This is not an advert, by the way. I don't go, no one's going to pay me for this. Go to that and I look, okay, and I click on the, the, the world. So where am I at the moment? in the United Kingdom but that's where I live wait a minute what if what if we move to the United States just for a little bit shall we okay quick let's let's go to the United States how do you do that I'm going to travel now my my, my laptop is now going to travel to the United States and um, don't know how long it takes oh it looks like it's done now so let's have a look so what i'll do i'll open that up have a little look let's go back go to that notebook lm oh and it's open <gasps> what i've already signed up in it in this i did that yesterday hi jason I mean, I guess they obviously can't see me. Otherwise, they'd ask for my age, wouldn't they? They'd be like, I just did the biggest sneeze then. In fact, it was a double um, exhalation of air, as it were. So, so what have I got? 
So, okay, so this notebook lm.google.com, I uploaded, I got 50, I tried to upload 100, but I got 57 of my PDF files, which are transcripts of my Let Me Boy to Slip podcasts. Slip, sleep podcasts. It's 57 of them. So it's between numbers three and a hundred i don't know which ones they are that they had anyway i can ask it questions so i just said tell me about the chip shop to start with it says the chip shop is a type of fast food outlet that is popular in the united kingdom it typically sells fried potatoes chips as well as fish sausages and curry sauce some also sell hot dogs burgers and other items one such chip shop is in east london <laughs> one such chip shop in East, East London okay and then I've got 10 citations where I've spoken about it so here's something about chip shop now it's all this is from number 46 let me boil you to sleep 14th of october now it's all i'll do my own voice here now it's all computerized and they don't know you know everything's digital now but back then it was tapes and vinyl you know i don't know why i'm going to talk about the chip shop it's a lot a lot more physically a lot more space was required and when i lived above the chip shop here you go you know, I was earning, so I was on a YTS, which is, it's a youth training scheme. It was a way to allow employers to employ young people for very, very small amounts of money, like tiny amounts of money. So for the first time, for the first year rather, I got paid £27 a week. And the second year, I got paid 30 What did I get paid for the second year? 30 something 35 pound a week i think and yes 35 pound was for the second year so that's me i'd mentioned the chip shop but i didn't really go into any kind of details so citation number three and just notice how your eyes feel what this is number 33 what was it's maybe you'd what a lovely sound. I'm going to suggest that that sound of the chip shop that just gone past as it... Okay, this is about the chip van. Right, citation number four. That's really intelligent to say something like that. So kind of... So I kind of learned how to gain false rapport. But I didn't really know what it was back then. But I do. I think it's, you know, anyway what <laughs> this is me just talking but it sounds a bit weird saying it in fact it doesn't really make sense favorite songs oh it used to be yeah i lived above a chip shop so i'm talking about my favorite songs and i decided to chuck in i used to live above a chip shop and there was this film this tv show i used to watch and i think it was it was either on a Friday night, might have been on a Saturday night, might have been on a Sunday night, I'm not sure, or early hours of the morning, maybe on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning, I suppose, yeah, possibly even on a Monday morning, I'm not sure what channel it was on because it was back in 1987, in England we only had four channels, so we had BBC, BBC, why, why am I not getting to the point? This is, do I normally, is this how I sound when I do podcasts? I'm really going off the subject. There's like, this is from the 14th of October, 2018. Let me bore you to sleep, number 46. Just get to the point, JJ. Oh, blimey, number five. This is citation, there's 10 citations that involved the term chip shop in these out of the 57 podcasts. So this is the 36, uh, number 36, Let Me Boy to Sleep, 
23rd of July 2018. So what is, what is this? Uh, okay. I've got three. Well, well, I might have four, but only two that I use because I think what happened is, yeah, that's right. I actually got a bag for life. What am I talking about? Oh, which was a Chris, which uh, <laughs> I got a bag for life, which was a Christmas from Iceland. I don't mean the country, the shop. I don't know. If you have Iceland where you live, we have, uh, it's a store and they sell frozen stuff. So the majority of, I say the majority, I don't even know if it is. Yeah, it probably is actually the majority of the food items in Iceland are frozen. So if you go into my standard store, and that's the one that's closest to me, there's quite a few freezers. And I'll go through that anyway. I'll tell you, I to describe the outlay of the floor and everything. So I think it was probably January, February time. I went into Iceland and I said to them, look, I've got these bags for life. They cost me 50 pence each. And the idea is you keep the bags. And when they wear out, you can replace them. So they'll replace them and it won't cost you anything to get. So a bag of life. So a bag of life. And I said. This is this is hard to follow. Are my podcasts hard to follow? I'm struggling with this. I said. I'm all over the place. I said to them. Look. I've invested a pound of my well. well I can't use the word hard earned money. Because I don't work. But I've used. You spend a pound of other people's hard-earned money on these two bags for life. And I said, I'm pleased with them. I said, <laughs> what? What on earth is this? I'm pleased with them. I said this to the cashier. And it was quite a cute, but they all seemed fairly okay. I looked in each of, a, each of their eyes and they seemed as if they were okay with me having this discussion although there was one person with a bowl of cider waiting to to pay for it and I think maybe she was in a hurry but I wasn't there for a long time long enough to have a sit down but I said I really appreciate that you and your colleagues uh, and I think it was Brenda that sold me those bags and it was around the beginning of December last year. So probably, if I remember about it, I don't think it was the first. I don't think it was the 2nd of December 2017. What? I don't think it was the 3rd. Oh, come on. Really? Am I really going to go through every single day of December? No. I mean, this is number 36. I mean, I've done 30... I've done more than 31 recordings before this one in the, you know, the let me bore you to sleep category of podcasts. I really, honestly, and then, oh, and then I'm going on, I'm pretty sure it's a Tuesday or a Wednesday. That's kind of in the ballpark area. And the lady in the cashier said that she didn't need that much information and there was a lot of people waiting to be served and I said okay so I continued to talk at her and you know what I said I really appreciated all the work you do and I appreciate the idea behind giving me these bags for life my understanding was that it was a financial commitment on my part to pay <laughs> what on earth am I talking about I don't understand a financial commitment on my part to pay for these bags and you know so I've taken a leap of faith really in 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 Iceland you know sorting out there half of the deal really you know so when 
when my bags for life start to wear start to fray start to you know they f get filled with holes because I live thing I fill them with things that are quite heavy and even things try out things that for example I do, what cans of coke and I talk about how I'm trying to cut down on coke I try to, but I mean I can't follow that it's, this is no way do I talk like this okay go to number six that's so that was number seven this is number okay number 36 again blimey I don't have to go on in number six it's uploaded into all the different podcasts and sharing it and making a video out of it uploading that to YouTube and sharing it again and putting it onto my website and making pages and yeah so that takes a couple of hours of work it's not really work is it I suppose it's just stuff so I hope you enjoyed my interest and routine of my day-to-day -day life I don't even mention the chip shop in this bit. Uh, that doesn't happen. I have not pretended to talk about or attempted. I didn't get around to telling you about the exact layout of the Iceland store. Maybe next time. <sighs> I really... I don't know. 36, 30... It keeps going to the same page, the same... 33, 46, 36. Blimey. So yeah, anyway. I'm pretty sure that's not. That can't be how I talk in these podcasts. So let's choose another subject. Subject. Um, what's something that's a, a common theme? Uh, um, brother Let's see if I got anything about my brother or brothers should I put brothers that might be a better one brothers brothers okay the brother didn't bring out anything up at all Jason had three brothers and his last bowel movement was when he was younger. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what he comes up with. That, that is the first bit of description. Jason had three brothers and his last bowel movement was when he was younger. His brothers were also the ones he experimented on with different things. He also had a best friend named Andre. Andre dated Andre's sister. That's not true. That's weird. Right, here we go. This is citation one. Citation one for brothers. Number 23, let me boy you to sleep. 6 of May. I don't know why I'm even mentioning tightropes or walking them. I never saw the point in that. Never really. Because I used to try when I was young. Everything happened when I was younger, didn't it? Even my last bowel movement was when I was younger. But I had... Well, because I had three brothers, I grew up with three brothers. And so we were all two older. One was... <laughs> what? One was a lot younger. He was eight years younger than me. So I, I, I was kind of the experiment for the older ones. So they get to do things, you know test stuff out this sounds a bit weird but it was uh, I guess just make fun of me really and this is number 39 27th of July 2018 towards the amazing ideas that I hear such as yours and Thomas what what I notice is these transcripts they have, they get a little, they, I don't know, because I know that I I speak, well, I don't know, I'm beginning to wonder, but there's no punctuation. 
in a lot of these at the end and it's just one big sentence that lasts for well it's difficult to follow it's almost like I'm just rambling on but never quite stopping never quite coming to the end of a sentence therefore it's difficult to know what you know it's hard to read so here's a say what is it towards the amazing ideas that i hear such as yours and thomas he just said wow that's brilliant i'm really pleased you shared that with me now i need to cough now i need you to cough and mr bankman said oh bless you thomas said you don't know why you said bless you but you don't say bless you when someone coughs it's when someone sneezes do you say that and he said yeah i know but someone coughed the other day and they were coughing and i didn't apparently i didn't give the correct response i didn't give any kind of response and my manager told me off and i and i had a cough and i said that what happened and about that and well the customers cough in and she gave me a business idea of theirs and that what on earth am i talking about and they were coughing and apparently according to my manager i didn't respond in the correct way i said that was the correct way was i well uh oh man honestly i it is complicated my, what didn't respond in the correct way and I said I should have called an ambulance when they stopped breathing I said okay that's probably a good idea anyway back to the idea is that wow let's start talking about the British hockey team I'm more, much more concise than this aren't I normally there must be a What's this got to do with my brothers? I'm talking about mistletoe and dentists. Really. So it, it it took work. A lot of energy to do. This is number 23. Let me boil to sleep. 6th of May. 18. So it took work. A lot of energy to do that. It's like trying to tie two, tig, two, two pig's tails together. Really difficult. I mean, I've never done that. I'm just telling you that, you know, just telling you that now. It's it's just neither of the pigs want to have their tails touched, really. They w don't want to be held in one place. They want to do their own thing. But then you've got two, and neither of them want to be tied to the other one. And that's the analogy you're probably not going to get anywhere else. You know that domestic arguments are very much like trying to tie two tig pig's tails together. No, you're probably not going to hear that anywhere else. You're welcome to use it if you like. Just remember to mention me. Do a little disclaimer. I'm going to say that at the end, by the way. That little analogy was from this person who makes recordings online and nobody knows why he does it, but he still keeps doing it. Still keeps plugging along and hoping that one day someone will listen to him. Well, actually, people do listen. You're listening. I do want to thank you. I don't think you realise how important you listening to these recordings are to me. It gives me a sense of purpose. A feeling that my life is worthwhile and I'm, in some small way, helping people like you. I hope, hopefully, I really do hope that at the very, very least... These, you know, my recordings can help you to relax and to calm down a bit and to focus away from those things that maybe you were thinking about previously to your decision to listen to my voice and to let your body and your mind naturally relax. And your mind calms, calms down, and the more you listen to me, the quicker you feel relaxed. I don't say that in case that it's a race because it's not there's no time limit you're not being timed it's not a competition and it's not going down from 100 to 0 it's about feeling however you feel and maybe being aware of the things a little 
a little bit more aware than maybe you were before. Blimey. Didn't mention my brothers, did I? Number six, what do I talk about in number six citation? Too many. I must have learnt something at school because I was there for a long time in high school. I was five years or five whole years. That's a long time when I was 13. I think I was sitting in the science room in the science lab and I think I was supposed to be doing something. You know, I didn't. Oh, you know, I don't, I don't know what kind of, some kind of experiment. I mean, in all fairness, the teacher generally kept me away from the Bunsen burners after a couple of incidents. Sis. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good example of touching. I don't know if anyone, if you're old enough, I don't know if you're old enough, if you still have a Bunsen burner at school and when you was at school. And if, if you know the tripods, they used to be, the Bunsen burner would be underneath the tripod and there'd be a metal dish or whatever on top of the tripod. And the amount of times I'd forgot that the tripod would be still be hot and the times I'd burnt myself. And that's a little bit like the beginning of each year, you know. I was very optimistic about holding that and grasping that tripod, giving it a good go, you know good hold as it was with school I used to go there on the first day of school and I had pencils and I had pens you know I was just a bill positive and quite positive and quite excited and it didn't last long oh the Bunsen burners how hot I forgot that anyway I'm in the science lab so I start talking about how touching a Bunsen burner is like the first day of school what is going on? Someone should have pulled me up on this. And there's another one here. They don't, they don't know. This is from number 39, July 27, 2018. They don't know. You know, they, they don't feel that I'm excited about their business ideas. So I decided to, you know, test some ways of showing people my genuine feelings of excitement towards the amazing ideas that I hear such as yours and Thomas yours and Thomas and he said wow that's brilliant I'm really pleased you shared that with me now I need to cough oh I've already read that one that's already been read what what's going back to the Okay, and this is number nine, number 40. This is number 10, 10th citation. So it's still, it's, uh, it's still a little bit all over the place, but I think that's because the recordings are all over the place. So this little bit, and there was my neighbor, my friend, and he had a cage. No, he didn't. No, he's holding these two little things. And so what's that? And I think they might have had a cage, I forget. Anyway, I just wanted to meet them because he said, oh, I've got two little ferrets, uh, two baby ferrets here. So I thought, can I come and meet them? Because I was intrigued, really. And this bloke that greets, greets them, greets them? That's not a real word. Yeah, come in. No, oh, maybe he did greet me. Introduced them to me to them. And there was two, so they're both brothers. This is the first time I saw Andre. This is what I'm talking about here. And I just fell in love with Fondre. <laughs> so it's meant to be Andre. I don't know what it was. I don't even know what it was about him. I think it was his face. And I remember I picked him up and he bit me. First thing he did was bite me. And when I say bite me, I don't mean nip. I'm talking clamp, biting, really hard bite. And I think it was, I, I just fell in love with him. 
and I don't know why. I don't know what it was, and there was no difference really between the two of them. They looked different, but there's something. They look. They did, did look different, but there was something about Fondre or Andre, as it should be. It's just. I just had these feelings for him straight away. Just really. It was also about the fact that he wanted this to destroy me and bite a hole in my hand. And he didn't like me at all. And that was... Maybe it was a challenge. I don't know. But it was probably one of the most exciting days I've had for a long time. Getting him, you know, it's better than any birthday or Christmas present I've ever had. So the other ferret was going to another person, another friend, because they decided, another friend decided he wanted to have him. So I bought, I bought both of them upstairs overnight, just to look after both of them, just for the night. And they did not stop fighting the whole time. They ran around the flat, they destroyed everything. And they were fighting and they were screaming and they were making all sorts of noises all night long. And all I was concerned really was the noise, you know, about disturbing the neighbours. I was worried about that. So I know it was only for one night, but in the morning I phoned my friend up and I said, you need to take one of them back. I'll keep Andre because I saw, I've already told him I wanted him. But you need to take the other one back because I can't handle them both together. Now, I kind of regret that. This is I'm just reading it now. It's weird. I just I'm feeling a little bit nostalgic for my little boy. Um I kind of regret that a little bit because perhaps I could have had both of them and they would have calmed down eventually, but it's okay, it is what it is. I kept Andre and shortly after he moved in here. He actually broke out of the cage. He didn't want to be in the cage at all. And it was like a more, it was more of a hamster cage, really. A tiny little thing. But it was wooden. Really strong wooden with metal bars. And he bent the bars. He bit through the wood and he bent the bars back and managed to get out. I don't know how he did it. And it was really strange for the first few days, the first week. It's it's not having a new toy, you know. I wanted to keep... Oh, well, it's, it's, it was like having a new toy. I wanted to keep playing with him. I wanted to keep picking him up. I wanted to pick him up and cuddle him and kiss him. And love, you know. But he wasn't. He, w he was constantly biting me all the time. He was having none of it. Every time I touched him, he tried to bite me. And he got away with it quite a lot. I managed to hold him in a way that he wasn't able to get to me. But still, it took a week of holding him. Constantly. And I, talk, I think this is going to be... Well, maybe two weeks but a week before he stopped trying to bite me at every opportunity. So he was still biting me for a week. Two weeks, he started to kind of get used to me a bit. And then after that, he just bit me occasionally, like whenever he felt like it. And then eventually it stopped. He stopped biting me. It's as if he didn't want anything to do with me at all. He's. It was interesting because he was so little... But he was so mischievous. Really, he's very noisy tonight. He got into everything. Are you talking about my brother Andre again, are you? Always talking about him. What about me? I'm the one that's here. You keep talking about Andre. He's not here anymore. But what about me? Me. <laughs> Love the one you're with. Love the one you're with. All right. Blimey. Will Young is sung about that. Love the one you're with. Uh... So he completely destroyed my settee. He ripped the carpet up in every part of the flat. He ripped the carpet up on the edges. Destroyed. Ruined the carpet. 
he just basically did whatever he wanted to do. I don't know how he managed to get out of places that he shouldn't have been able to get out of, considering how little he was. I don't know. I, I made some videos at a time when I was filming him. Wish I still had those videos because it'd be nice to have kept them. This is me, still me talking. I'm still reading this thing out. I need to stop reading. I'm basically read a podcast of me reading transcript of a previous podcast from nearly six years ago. Wow. This is a bit... I've talked about this before. Um, I'm sitting... But there was one moment when probably in October... So I had him for two or three weeks I was just sitting in my chair it might not be in this chair it might be in the old chair that I had but I'm watching television I've got a can of lager and I've got my dressing gown on so I must have maybe had a bath and I'm just I've just got the heating on so I've got my dressing gown on I'm just relaxed and he climbs up on my leg and this is one of the first times he's actually ever done this. He just, he used to climb up my leg to try to bite me, but this time he didn't. He climbed up on my leg and he climbed onto the arm of the chair. The one that wasn't drinking. The arm of the chair wasn't drinking, obviously. Now I'm just adding stuff to what's being said. So, oh now it's, oh, not that the arm was drinking, blimey. I haven't changed that much, have I? So I literally just said what I, the next line without seeing the next line. But my left arm was resting on the armrest and climbed. And he climbed up and he climbed up towards my arm. I thought he was going to bite my hand and he didn't. What he did do, he climbed up my sleeve, the sleeve of my dressing gown. And he went to sleep. And that was the first time that I felt close to him. And he was doing it. He was, I mean, for the rest of the night. He was sleeping there for hours, a few hours. And I was getting up. Even when I had to go to the toilet or go to get another lager out of the fridge. I was holding my arm up, making sure that he was still okay and he was fast asleep. It didn't, you know, it didn't fall out. Wow. Blimey. Okay, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but this is the notebook lm.google.com. Um, so I went to the doctor's today and... Really, really nice lady. I went, went to the... It was um, a nurse. So I had to get there for 4 o'clock p.m. I didn't know what buses to get. I've not been on a bus. Um, I did get a... I think I might have got a bus back when I had my dentist appointment. But I think I got a, a taxi there when I had my tooth out in January. And that was the last time I went anywhere near town. And the time before that was probably when I went to court with my friend. And that would have been the beginning of last year. And I think we got a taxi there and back as well. So I haven't been on a bus. Uh, it's not completely true. I've been on a bus with Vinny twice, but only as far as the top shops which is like five minutes, a few minutes on a bus. And he didn't like it, so I got off the bus and came home. Never took him into town. So I didn't know what number of buses to get. I didn't know what the number was, because they've changed all the numbers. They used to, well, they used to have numbers. Now they've got letters and numbers. And I was asking people, do you know which number bus, what bus goes? And they said, don't know. 
And I put my arm out for one bus. It didn't stop. Coming back, I waited. This this bus stopped. I went to the bus. It was a coach, bus, whatever. And he ignored me. Like, he was waiting to let other people off. So, okay, fair enough. But I just wanted to ask him a question. You know, if, if I... I always look. If there's people at the back of the bus getting up to get off... I stand and wait for people to get off. I don't just get on, you know. I'm I'm fairly considerate, I would say. Uh, I really, I really trip people up, and but he kept the door closed, and when he did open the door, and people were coming, and I said, "Oh, just chat to him." I don't suppose do you go? He said, "This is school bus, mate." Oh, why didn't he open the door and tell me that? He could see I was standing to get on the bus. Unless he thought I was picking up one of the kids that might have actually... He might have thought I was a parent. I hadn't thought about that. Fair enough. Okay. And then another bus is coming past. This is on wait as I'm waiting to come back. And I, I put my hand out. Stop him. No, other people get off the bus. Yeah, so I didn't stop the bus. The bus stopped anyway. People got off and I said to him... Are you, do you know which, and I knew this bus didn't go where I was going. I knew it was going back to town. And I said, do, do you know which bus goes to where I live? He said, depends where you live. No, he didn't. But he, he said, I told him the area and he said, well, this one doesn't. It goes to town. I said, I know that. I bloody know that. Well, you, why you got such an attitude, mate? Da, do you know what number does go? And he shouted. Eh, eh. I said, what? Eh, eh. And uh, I said, I said, wait. And he said, wait a minute. I just put my teeth back in. So he was, it was a little glass and he was rinsing his teeth, cleaning them while he was driving. So couldn't really understand them so much. But he put them in, spoke perfectly. It's like, it's you can't have this. And I thought, okay, thank you. And uh, I don't care what anyone says, he didn't look like a horse. He didn't, not at all. He looked lovely. So we went, I got there too early. The appointment was four o'clock. I got to the area, which was just up the road from the doctor's surgery at... Um, <laughs> Uh, it's a bit chilly in there now. I got there just after three. So I decided to go and say hello to a friend. Someone I haven't seen f since January. So I went and said hello to him. It took me 22 minutes to get to his place. I thought it was literally just around the corner. It was a long old walk. I get there, have 15 minutes talking to him, and then I leave in order to get back in time. So it was, I mean, it was good. It was probably, it was a good thing to do to see him and catch up with him, but it was, I spent more time walking than actually talking. So I get back to the doctor's surgery with about eight minutes spare. And... It seemed to be more kids' hour because there's a lot of parent, there's a few parents with a lot of children running around. So maybe it was nursing or some, I don't know, some kind of pregnancy thing. Um, but it didn't seem like like a normal, not normal, but there wasn't like lots of people waiting to be seen by the doctor, and I wasn't either. So maybe it was a nurse, like the, it was the period where people come and see the nurse, the practice nurse. So I had a blood test booked because they need to test my blood every year because of the medication I'm on for the bipolar. So I was like, okay. So it's, the first thing she did is give me a blood pressure test. First one was high, second one was fine. So it's often away, they do it twice. And it's just 
she said, it's all right, it's fine. So that's nice. And I do have the ability to relax, to calm down quite usually. The last time I was really, really, really not relaxed was when Andre, not Andre, Vinny bit me in the park. I think it was about a month ago. And I really, it took me a while to get down from that, to calm down from that. But generally, I'm I'm fairly, fairly laid back. Fairly. And the lady, the, the nurse is really, really friendly. And we're just chatting and talking about a few things. And she was wearing a mask. And I said, do you want me to wear a mask? I haven't got one, but if you've got one, I'll wear it. She said, no, it's fine. And she said, I'll wear one. But she told me why. And we were talking about masks for a bit. And um, she she was really funny. And then so I had my blood pressure done. And then I had a blood test, which is fine. Um, I had to talk to her because uh, the doctor told me to mention two things to her. The first thing was to get my prostate checked for a particular thing. Uh, uh, I want to—I don't want to say hereditary, but it's three members of my family have got a certain prostate condition. So, and these are like close members of the family. Ma- ma- one male, of course, it's male, isn't it? Oh, I'm not allowed to say that these days, are we? But. You know, prostate. Uh, so it's that's been included like in my bloods because I've been tested for diabetes for all the different things that I normally generally test test for. I didn't I mean know what it was, but they're also going to test for that as well. I don't want to say the words to be honest, but they're testing for that. And I said, well, also I need something about bone density. And they said, no, we don't do that in blood. You have to have an x-ray for that. And that was to do with the potential osteoporosis and the amount of breaks I've had in my my body. And I said, okay. So the blood test results are on Friday. It's Monday today. I just phone them up. And I'll find out what the results are. Uh, uh, uh. (laughs) It's like, okay. Um, because, yeah, okay, anyway, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm doing there. I don't know, I'm, I haven't really had time to think about it, but this, you know, without getting all dramatic, could be quite a big thing, so hopefully, fingers crossed, everything's fine. Uh, no symptoms that I know of, but, you know, because close members of the family and direct, like, you know, relatives, as it were, have this thing, then, and kind of, it's, yeah, I do need to get tested. Um, so, yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. And that's kind of it, really. When I got back, I was so tired. So tired. It's really weird because I'd spoke to the doctor. The doctor said, you need to get a prostate, your prostate tested. And when he, and he said, but don't, you know, I said, oh, it says, a blood test he said yeah yeah and he laughed he says I don't really fancy mind you once I met her the nurse I will no but anyway she said he said that's fine you know there's different ways of testing it and well after she'd done the blood pressure test she went over to the other side of the the thingy the the room and she put on some rubber gloves Now, for a split second, 
I thought I was kind of in two minds. Oh no. There's a small voice going, yay, yippee. No, but there was, I was like, no, 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 no. That doctor lied to me. He said I didn't have to do this. And uh, it turns out, I said, is that for the prostate? She said, no, it's for a blood test. She said, oh. She said, prostate? Who's prostate? Who, who's, who's, who's prostate? I said, no, um, the doctor said I needed to get tested for prostate. And she said, oh, okay, I'll just add that. So it wasn't part of the standard collection of tests for the blood, so she added it to it. But she didn't add anything to do with uh, bones or anything like that. What I didn't realise is they can test for arthritis for a blood test. I didn't know that. So yeah, so that's that that's that was a little bit it was generally a relief because just 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 you know, just was. I don't I don't think I need to really expand upon that one. I think it's all fine within a loving relationship, but Maybe not on a in a public place when there's people waiting to get into the room after you. Because let's face it, no one was wanting wanting to go into that room after that. Um and I left the room holding my arm going, Ow, ow and she laughed because she there was people waiting to go in there. Which in retrospect probably wasn't a very sensible thing to do, especially if there was people with needle issues and stuff. I didn't think about it because I was just I don't know, I was just, I guess I was quite happy to be out, to be talking to a human, other than a, someone other than a dog walker, which is generally all I talk to. The only people I talk to is people that have dogs. Don't have any conversations with people outside of this area. Never leave this area. And it was weird to be out. I mean, I was on a bus. Then I was in my friend's flat that I haven't been in for years. And then this is the the one that lived, that I visited. And then I was in the doctor's surgery that I've not been in for years. I think, I, did I go last year with him or was it a year before with my friend? I don't know. But it's been a while since I went myself. Last year I went, I think. Yeah, so it's not been that long. It's probably did go last year, actually. Unless I, I might have had a phone interview, actually. I might have had a phone one. Because, yeah, because I had a paramedics come round last year. But they took bloods from me. And the doctor basically looked at the bloods and spoke to him on the phone. So I don't think I actually went in. I'd yeah I'm trying to think and then I come back so I come out of the doctor's surgery I walk up to the bus stop and there's a McDonald's nearby and I thought I was in two minds because like, there's a few buses coming didn't know which bus I had to catch and I really like oh but then I saw that there was only like 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes between each. I kept thinking, burger, milkshake. I haven't had a warm burger. I haven't had a milkshake for, you know, ages. And just, I could get them to take away, but that's not really fair. Because if the bus turns up, I'll stink the bus out even more than normal so I thought Ugh. and I decided but then I was walking up towards the McDonald's and walking around and there's people it's quite busy in there and there's all these people all these humans and I'm looking at them and I'm thinking oh, I feel so self-conscious and just I don't know I'm not used to being in a public 
space uh, and then I'm sitting so I I order a quarter pound of cheese meal medium meal don't know why the medium is so important but I didn't go for large didn't need it just went for medium although large is only 75 pence more but I still stuck to medium and of course the straw went to mush after a little while because cardboard goes soggy doesn't it if you put it in your mouth for too much it goes soggy it's it's just ugh. i mean ugh. anyway i mean they went from really good straws <laughs> You know, McDonald's, really good straws. And then they start using the, the crappy straws, which were just, you'd be struggled to get them through the little plastic container. I don't know if anything's plastic anymore in there, is there? It's all cardboard and paper. and Even the staff. Oh, I felt a bit bad. Um, so I was, I was using the computer screen to order it. Because you know they don't don't like you to actually talk to anyone, and so I do it with my finger, not my the end of my finger, but with my knuckle, kind of the knuckle on my finger. So I don't like to touch screens with my with my hands, especially if I'm going to be eating. So uh, not the screen, but the food. So I, I do that, and then I, I get ready, and it was like seven pound or something. Like okay, I've got to pay for it. It's gone up. I'm sure. Big, I'm sure a quarter pound of cheese was about five pound. It used to be two pound. So anyway, I, I and I couldn't pay for it. It wasn't swiping, so I, I said, excuse me, please. And there was a man sorting out the cutlery or whatever right next to me. And he turned around and I said, I don't suppose you could help me. And the thing's not swiping. And... he was he had to call someone to come over and help me and so it was a lovely chat but he was he wasn't able to help me anyway so I got the bloke came out and I hadn't pressed the right buttons and it was like you've oh, you need to have you need to evaluate your you have to check through your order before you pay for it I said I'm just this is all I'm getting I said no you need to so there's a lot of button pressing to get to the point where I can actually pay for it I mean like what language are you I've got to give them my language I don't know how many different languages are on the screen so it's like wow and maybe these are just international computers and they have them all over the world and it's just but it's like I don't remember ever being asked what language I am and it makes sense because if it was all in Chinese, I wouldn't be able to use it, would I? Unless, of course, I know what food looks like. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, you don't need language. You can see what it is. There's a picture. Quarter pound of cheese, Big Mac, fries, milkshake. You can see it. It's there. Anyway, I... um. So I paid for it. And the bloke said, oh, here's your receipt. Here's your... He gave me a plastic thingy with a number on it. I'll bring it over to you. He lied. He sent someone else over. I thought we got him really well. Clearly he didn't. He didn't want any more. He was just... To him, I was just a customer. To me, he was like a saviour. He helped me to resolved the issue that I had with the, with the machine and to him no I was just another customer he just forgot straight away anyway anyway the, and the, the, another person brought over my meal on a tray and so I'm eating it as you do, it's, that's what I was there for. Ate it and it was all right. It was, well, it's the first time in ages that I've had fries that were hot. 
I say ages. I mean, I've I've ordered McDonald's twice for delivery in the last hundred years or something. You know, so it's not like it's a regular thing. But I won't order it again. Not not delivery. It's, I live too far away from where they are. And it was this. Ah, oh, I mean, I, I'm kind of my favourite thing is probably the milkshake. To be honest. I always liked the milkshakes. And, but I did enjoy the burger as well. The first few bites. And I liked... See, the onions, I'm pretty sure the onions in the old days used to be chopped up. Little little bits of onion. Which I think is the best way to have onion on a burger. Is like really very finely, 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 finely chopped and tiny little bits is it just it it's a it's a better way to eat onions i think personally it's a personal personal opinion I means i per, i think it's a fact but you know it's it's, it's 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 an opinion it's an opinion it's okay we can all we just, we just all need to just get along we all have our own certain ways of eating onions and that's the way that i prefer to have my onions presented to me is it diced? I don't know, but it's very, very small, very small. So I had that, and then I left. I was looking for somewhere to to get rid of the rubbish, and I couldn't see anywhere. And I thought, what? So they they basically made use of all the space, and I couldn't. Maybe it was behind me, that's why I couldn't see it. Yeah, thinking about it, I think the bin was behind me. So I wanted to empty the tray. I'm not one of those people that leaves stuff on the table. Yeah, but that's what they're paid to do, isn't it? They're paid to collect the table, the staff, they're paid to do that. Yeah, but what about someone coming in and sitting down? Someone that, you know, it's, come on. Just let's just think about others. Yeah, but they're paid to do it. It's it's the amount of times I've had these kind of conversations with people. They're like, oh, someone's someone's uh, left a can, an empty can on the floor. That could be a tripping hazard. Why don't you pick it up then? Nope, that's what the road sweepers are paid for. They're paid to pick up stuff. The uh, It's not my job, it's them. They're paid for. That's what we pay our taxes for. But what about the banana skin? Yeah, that's a health hazard. That is, that's a slipping hazard. And that oil, that oil slick all over the road, that could cause an accident. Well, why don't you report it to the to the council and let them know before there's an accident? Nope. It's the council's job to know that there's a been a, an oil slick on the road. That's that's the government's job to tidy that up and clear it up and let them know. Not mine. They get paid to do that. Not me. They get paid. I pay their taxes. I do. It's was it? Um, I think it was Arnold Schwarzenegger. He, it's a big leap, I know, but he, him and some neighbours filled in some potholes in his road. I remember seeing this, I just had a memory of it. So that's all another one of those things, is everyone moans about the potholes, yet there's loads of people around that would know how to fill a pothole in. It would take, like, minutes probably. Just a little bit. In fact... I could probably even do it. I've used, I had a job where I used to put tarmac into holes. Like, I would make a hole. I did this job on a, it was a train station track in the night time. And we, used to, we were taking up these lights, big, you know, big long light things, and then filling it in with tarmac. And it was just this tarmac in a bag. 
basically. It was, once you un, unsealed the bag, it was damp. And you just pack it in. It's just you pack it tight. I guess like like a filling, really. And it was, it was quite fun. So even if it's not like per, a permanent solution, it's definitely an easy solution. But like, no, I'm not paying for the tarmac. That's the that's the government's job. I'm not paying for that. It's like okay, this. I don't know. I think it'd be nice if people got together a little bit more and just like, well, just let's just sort this out instead of moaning about it. Let's just we could just sort it out. See, I don't know how to tarmac necessarily, but. You know, among there's going to be enough people in your road, someone's going to know how to do it, and the rest of the people can all get together, and the road can be sorted in half an hour or maybe half a day. No, but we're not allowed to touch the roads. Well, as long as you don't put spikes up, and you don't, you know, you don't like, you know, you don't do weird things. Just, yeah, you know, don't build a swimming pool in the middle of the road. Then you should be fine. Apparently, this bloke on a talking radio show talked in. He, he phoned in a talk radio thing. And he said that the council, he, he, he complained about a pothole. And the councillor came along. Filled in the pothole and left one inch left. And so they just filled it in with some, quickly filled it in, like, you know, a bodge job. And then uh, he phoned the council and they said, no, it's not a pothole, it's only one inch thick. One inch deep. It's not classed as a pothole. And he took him to court. This is what the bloke said. Don't know if it's true or not. He took him to court and he won. Because they lied to him. And he had film footage before and after and during. And because he knew the people that had the shop outside, they were filming it on their camera. And there was witnesses. And it's just something you wouldn't expect that would go, that would be like a legal thing. But he pushed it. He said, no, this is, they're lying. They won't. In potholes, they can damage a car. But man, what they can do to a, a cyclist or someone on a motorbike is way worse than what happens to a car. Pretend, you know, potentially, I mean. I mean, I've gone over potholes. Potholes? Potholes. Just walking over a pothole can be weird. So if you don't see it, because we have, like, drivers, you've got potholes, but we have them on the pavement as well. And sometimes they fill stuff in and it's a lump. So you can't see that it rises up. The pavements, the paving in this country. Now I'm not sure, I, don't, I haven't, I've not inspected every single pavement in the UK. But by the way, a pavement is the, it's that bit at the side of the road where people walk, pedestrians walk on. Just in case you're not from the UK. Um... I mean, I guess if you don't call it a pavement, it's at the side. It's at the side where you walk. Um, I suppose it makes sense if you if you didn't want to call it a pavement, you could give it another name, but something that's easy to remember. So it's it's at the side where you walk. Uh, so I guess you could give it if you were to give it a number. Hey, sidewalk. Yeah, that that'd be a good good name for a pavement. Because it's at the side where you walk. A pavement, like pavement, it's a paved area. I don't know what the meant. I guess the meant just means area. Yeah. Isn't language inquisitive? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, I'm going to... It's half past ten. Yeah. I'm going to have a, a bowl of breakfast cereal and a cup of tea and go to bed.
not I'm, I'm give it another hour so I go to bed about half 11 maybe it's a bit of a later night than normal normally in bed by 10 but you know it's all right it doesn't really matter Billy's just come to the end of his chomping on his bone and now he's on a drink of water so it's a good timing and he hasn't been barking he's been maybe he's he's happy to have me home because you know I've heard that I don't know if it's true but some dogs they, they don't know if you're coming back you know and I was gone for quite a while and because I've been with him pretty much all the time since I've had him which is nearly what's one year and five months now he's now sitting on my foot so yeah Anyway, I'm sure there was something I wanted to talk about. I can't remember what it was. Couldn't have been important. <sighs> oh, yawning. So, thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. You know what? That sign which says, I deserve, I deserve to be happy that I wrote above the the door of the living room about nine years ago I can't it's it's literally without my glasses on if I didn't know what it said I couldn't even guess it it is literally fuzzy bear in mind I'm not very far away from the door and it's quite big writing it's not huge writing, but it's not it's not the same writing you'd have on a piece of paper. And I look through my glasses, I deserve to be happy, X. Oh, kiss, kiss, kiss. Strange, isn't it? Eyesight's a weird thing. Didn't they There was a new technique that made s- Someone that was born without hearing can now hear or someone was born without sight can now see. It was a, a, a new technology. Let me, I want to check this because I, I find this stuff fascinating. Um, let's have a look. Okay, Pion, this is four days ago. I know I saw this somewhere. Pioneering gene therapy restores UK hearing. Restores what? UK girls hearing. Um, oh, she's a little girl. Oh, right. I don't know why I thought it was like um, an adult. I just thought it was like a, a grown person. That lived their life. So, a UK girl born deaf can now hear unaided after groundbreaking gene therapy treatment. Opal Sandy, that's the name of the little girl, was treated shortly before her first birthday, and six months on, blimey, she's she looks older than that. First, she's a year and six months. She looks at least, I'd say, she looks about a year and eight months. She can hear sounds as soft as a whisper and is starting to talk. Same word as mama, dada, and uh-oh. That's it's what it says here. Isn't it amazing? I mean, it's just this... It's, give, it's given as an infusion into the air. The therapy replaces faulty DNA, causing a type of inherited deafness. Um, inherited alright her sister Nora has the same type of deafness and manages well wearing an electric cochlear ear plant, in, implant wow it, it is the advancements 
that's the thing that I just find so fascinating. I mean, I don't understand all this stuff, not really. I know the ears are near their head, but I don't, it's, I don't, you know, the, like the whole how everything works and stuff. I, I don't really, I've not got much interest in the that stuff, but when it comes to fixing things, when it comes to healing and helping people, it's like, wow, I love it. Absolutely love it. And just the, it's just phenomenal. Absolutely amazing. Wow. And this, this, yeah, I mean, really, that's where AI is going to come into its own with things like gene therapy because they can now, because a lot of it is testing. So a lot of these things is you test different things together, different scenarios, different genes, different things done together, you know, to test an outcome. And yes, maybe not it's a, an exact science because maybe it has to be tested, but or it does have to be tested, but they they can eventually come up with ideas, medication, different chemicals mixed together, DNA, all this stuff. Okay, I don't know what I'm talking about, but with AI they can do something that human beings in a lab, even if it's a lab using a computer, they can do a synopsis and they can test lots of different ways. But AI can now do it a lot faster. And uh, this specialist was saying, AI specialist, he said, basically you can get together you know um, you're looking for a solution for a thing and you want to test lots of different components mixed together and lots of different variables and test it like someone can do that on a computer and just keep going through it and it can take years and years and years AI can do they can literally do ten year, ten thousand years worth of work in like a month. Ten thousand years of testing that would take a human being to do, or lots of human beings to do. They can get it all. It can be done. And keep testing and keep testing until they come up with a match, I guess. And I get, if you think about it, really, if you think there was only one match, someone needed um, a new fingernail. Let's say it needed a new fingernail, and that was a thing. We used to transplant fingernails. Or, an, I don't know, it could be, I don't want to make it gross, so just something minor. Um, let's say fingernail. Although fingernails, I, I like my fingernails. Um... Let's, let's say uh, someone needed a new. Okay, they needed a new body part. Let's say for whatever. And there was only one. There's only ever going to be one match in the entire world, but that person has got two, so it's fine. They can, you know, providing they're willing to do it, it's fine. And maybe even you just need. Uh, some of their blood and that will keep you that will heal you you know so it won't be but there's only one person out of 7 billion in the, on the planet that has that one microbe in their blood that can actually save your life or, or help you how do you get to find that so you take blood tests blood samples of everyone on the planet that's not that difficult to do, I imagine, to be honest. I mean, it'd take a while in India and China and some of the bigger countries, but ultimately it's just a blood test, isn't it? And you don't need fresh blood tests. You can just have samples. People have had blood tests previously. 
collected all that data together, because most people would have had blood samples at some point in the past. Too much blood in this re recording, I do apologise. Anyway, it would take a long time to find one match for one person out of the entire world. But not with AI. It still might take a while, to be honest, because there's quite a few people. But instead of taking... Well, it would take too long, probably. Because it's not just like, oh, um, here's a match. They've got... It, you'd have to, all, every, all the blood would have to be checked and and everything. All the samples would have to be diagnosed and whatever. See, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm still still talking about it. But that can be done so quickly with AI. It, uh, there will become a time where it just be almost instant. Okay, so you need a new knee. Right. Ding. Oh, okay, cool. We've got, we've got a match. We'll see whether or not they, they need theirs. Um, it's going to be phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's, and apparently every six months it's sort of growing ten times. It's getting ten times quicker, ten times faster, ten times larger. The AI models, which, especially the language... Uh, you can buy a robot now for sixteen thousand dollars, like an Android. Sixteen. I don't know if it's going to be sixteen thousand dollars for, but Android for sale. Let's have a look. Android for sale. Re reef. Oh no. It's, okay, robot. Android. It's like the Android phone in it. Robot. Robot for sale. Here we go. How fast can a raptor can a raptor the robot go? Forty six kilometers per hour. Oz Robotics. This is in New York. Let's have a look. Come on, come on, everyone. Join me in my little flight of fancy. Let's have a look. see what we got. They sell robotic arms. Four axis robotic arms for education in robotics, robo robotics and coding between a thousand and five thousand. They've got underwater drones, Robo Sea underwater scooters. Wow, blimey. I want to know where's the actual robots though. Come on, come on, don't tease me. Give me the robot. Right, this is a robotics company. It's not an actual all oh, robot robotic kits. Humanoid robots. I thought this would be on the front page, but it wasn't. So I've got humanoid, humanoid robots, but I'm pretty sure these are little ones. These are educational, AI vision, humanoid robots, learning, teaching, kit powered by Raspberry Pi 4B, 4, 4G, B. These, yeah, I'm pretty sure they, they wouldn't be very big. So that's not what I'm looking for. I want to do humanoid robots. Robotic toys. Mm. Um, okay, let's go back. Robots. Best. Humanoid robots for sale. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. I sometimes look at these people that talk about AI. And they just remind me a little bit of the androids from the old 70s shows. Like Logan's Run. 
and there was another android in Star Trek Next Generation. E, there's that that look. There's a look. Right. Sand Sandbot Max Business Service Robot ten thousand dollars. Eden Robotics Intelligent Robot thirty five thousand. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm just gonna. I'm okay. Eden Robotics Eve Robot Receptionist out of stock twenty thousand dollars. Three reviews. Let's see what it says. Right. Um, Eden Robots Eve is the next technological frontier in robotics she looks human this is my words here she can welcome guests provide assistance answer questions guide and entertain customers entering your store or business eve can provide services make sales display your brand and make suggestions she can also perform light duty tasks like housekeeping mail really mail service or anything else you want her to do realistic female synthetic robot made with silicone can learn to perform business tasks on a daily basis artificial intelligence for learning speech and object recognition business surveillance and safety 100 percent tpe don't know what that means with metal skeleton providing human-like movement and the ability to perform tasks. Battery provides four hours of continuous operation. Height four foot six. Powerful microcomputer for robot control. Right, let's have a look at the reviews. Right, okay. Hashem, let's put Hashem, that's his or her remark, not received yet, I'm waiting to purchase Eve, that's from John C, and really, as put, demo video please, sounds great, but it's no demo video, or dolls and stock, um, hmm, there's another, <laughs> <laughs> There's another called Lexi, robot receptionist. Um, it's just uh, just the way they've dressed her. Is that it's not a business wear. It's not what I'd expect to see in an office. Um. In a nightclub, maybe. Maybe I'm just getting old. Well, there's no maybe on that one, is there? Matthias, for this one, says, Bring a central for me and I'll give you 10 out of 10. What? Can you bring it today? So what he's basically saying is, If you give me a free robot, I'll give you 10 out of 10. Yeah, that's how the world works, mate. Quinn 8. 989 verified reviewer out of stock is the headline when will they be back in stock will like to purchase an assistant for my new business sure you would what is the new business eh a camera's involved oh no 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 oh that's okay is the mannequin a robotic mannequin. Mannequin? Blimey. Anyway, I didn't find the ones I was looking for, but I did find some interesting stuff there. Only interesting to me. Ugh. 159 members still. So it hasn't gone up or down, which is good. That's good. Oh no, 132. Oh no, it's 159. 
So, thank you for listening. I'm going to go now. I've already said all my goodbyes. Remember to be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye.